we had some technical issues and April uh, had to uh, take care of some things. And so she's going to join us at another time. So we're going to interview Ms. Lauren Banks and Mr. Wendell Tab. This is Theater Talk Live right here on Facebook. And so my, all my co-hosts is Michelle Saunders. How you doing, Michelle? Hello, I'm good. Okay, and Mr. Wendell Tab from Hillside High School. Hello, How everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. And Ms. Lauren Banks, how you doing from City on the Hill? Hi. All right. And in high, uh, uh, Hillside High School alum. That's what I thought you were going to say, from Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, from Durham, <laughs> North Carolina. All right, Michelle, oh. you can take it. So thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, you know, we've been doing theater talk now for the past couple of weeks. And what we like to do is interact with those who are, you know, really taking part in theater, various areas of theater. And so today we have, you know, Mr. Wendell and uh, Ms. Lauren, who is a graduate, an alum of Hillside High. And I think it's a great opportunity to bring the both of you together. We can talk about, you know, how everything was in high school how, you know, how it enhanced you and helped you, you know, build your career going forward. So I'm going to start with Mr. Wendell. Um, Mr. Wendell, I've heard so much about you um, <laughs> and, and all the amazing things that you have done. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Wow. Well, thank you for those kind words. Um, I'm truly blessed um, to have family in the world, my mom, my dad, and my sisters, um, and all of my family members that embraced theater, um, embraced what I wanted to do. Uh, a lot of times you don't get that all the time, but they embraced it from the onset because I think a lot of it, it was, they didn't know what to expect. I'm from the country. I'm a country boy, uh, grew up um, in a small town, uh, Lewisburg, North Carolina, and the, the closest thing we had to entertainment was perform in church um, or, you know, kids just trying to start their own little band and just, you know, playing music and singing. Um, so they didn't know a lot about it. Um, I didn't know a lot about it, and but I knew what I wanted to do. So uh, as a young kid growing up, um, I had a passion for performing, for making people smile. And mm -hmm. uh, so that led me to my my years uh, at North Carolina Central University and then on to um, to do do it uh, for Hillside High School for the 33 years that I've been there now. Wow, you've been there for, you said 33 years? Yeah, this ended 33. Okay, so I heard a little birdie and a couple of birdies told me that you might retire. Is this, um, is this true? <laughs> you said, so the bird, so Yes, so Bertie told you that I was that you may be retired. What did Bertie tell you? <laughs> retirement was in the right. Area. So, right. Well, you, after you know, with most educators, you know, they get to thirty years, and then you be like, okay, you got your thirty years. Now it's time for you to go. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I think with me, it's, it's about the students. And because they didn't get a chance to do their last two shows, um, you know, I promised them that I would come back uh, so that they could finish those shows. Uh, and that's because of the love that I have for them and the love that they have for the program. And, um, but after 30 years, you know, with educators, there's some other things that I want to do. Uh, I want to do some film that I want my former students to, to direct and produce and do all that so they can put me in some stuff. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. So I have a question. When you're working with your students, um, what what do you give them to keep them motivated? Because I know that's a lot of work, a lot of dedication that goes into, you know, to being an actor. And I know it can get a little frustrating, like, oh, I don't remember my lines. OK, I'm not getting this. All of that. Like, what do you tell them to say, hey, you got to keep going? Yeah, you know, a great question. Uh, and my answers to questions sometimes is, sometimes don't seem like the right answers or it's kind of like out the box. But my answer is that I give them hope. You know, mm -hmm. it's the hope, it's the hope that, that they can do it. It's the hope that, that they can be successful 
uh, in, in what they want to do. So that hope leads to um, just giving them love, giving them encouragement, giving them motivation, giving them a product, giving them the opportunity to be on stage. And so that hope for them is that they can be Lauren E. Banks, you know, they can be April Parker Jones, they can be whoever they want to be because that hope is always there. So I give them hope. Uh, wow. Okay. So with that, so Lauren, how did you, what was your interaction with, um, with Mr. Tab? Like when you started um, his program, how did you feel going through the process and going all the way to the end working with Mr. Tab? Well, that's funny. I, my interaction with Mr. Tab started before I got to Hillside because of the Hillside educational matinees that they do. Mm -hmm. And so as a student at Shepherd Middle School, uh, mm, Kenneth Warmack took us, uh, the students, over to Hillside for field trips. Um, that's how I met Mr. Tab. That's how I got to know Hillside drama. And, um, and then my father took me to see, I think, a play called Perilous Times um, at the Carolina Theater. Mm -hmm. and, and I think I, I met Mr. Tab then. Or yeah, I met him then and I had just started at Hillside as a freshman. And the, the relationship was solidified in theater arts one class, uh, fourth period, Mr. Tab, freshman year. We had freshmen, sophomores, juniors and seniors in the class. And the first day of class, he said, who in here thinks they may want to pursue this work professionally, raise your hand. I raised my hand, <laughs> very, bold, very, very confident after, after, after having gotten a hunch that I may want to do this thing um, in middle school. And he said, well, say your, who, what's your name? Um, and I told him my full name, Lauren Banks. And he said, Banks, Banks. I know, <laughs> I know some Banks's, you know, Yolanda Banks. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's my aunt. He said, how about Daryl Banks? And he, he, I was like, that's my uncle. Uh-huh. He said, well, I pledged, I pledged A5A with your uncle, Daryl Banks, the late Daryl Banks. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I went to North Carolina Central with your aunt. And we went over to Carolina and helped pledge your father, Sherrod Banks, <laughs> at <laughs> Carolina for A5A. Um, so mm -hmm. in that moment, with what happened is Mr. Tab um, proceeded to pledge me. <laughs> by telling me to get on the stage in front of the whole class. Mm -hmm. And since, since everybody that raised their hands, get on the stage and I'm gonna give you an a, a, a improv. And um, I mean, that was the moment basically. That improv lasted the duration of the class. Mr. Tab acted with us and a class of people who were very interested to not interested at all in drama all came mm -hmm. together very focused, very alert, very aware of this power that was storytelling, so. Wow. So we, we really wanna know, and I know the fans who are watching this wanna know, how did you get to Showtime? Well, how did that come you know, from high school to college, to grad school, to where you are now? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the seed was planted in Durham, North Carolina. Um, and then it sprouted out. Um, I ended up going to, to, to undergrad at Howard University. Um, and that was also at the recommendation to look into the program from Mr. Tab. Um, right. Because at the time I, you know, once I had that aha moment in class that day, the next mm -hmm. the duration of the next summer trying to figure out how to become an actor. I just simply uh, put it in a search engine called Ask Jeeves. And I put in Ask yeah. Jeeves, how do you become a successful professional actor? And what? they told me, get a headshot, get a resume, get an agent, go train. And so the training um, that I discovered was uh, to do so at either an undergraduate program or a graduate program. And so I found Howard, uh, four year BFA at Howard and then, um, a teach. I also had another great teacher by the name of um, Al Freeman, who just kind of opened mm. up what acting was for me. And as you know, many of you know Al Freeman from. Oh yeah, Al Malcolm Freeman X. Jr. Al Freeman Jr. Right from Malcolm X. Uh, he played Elijah Muhammad, and what he was—he was seventy 
three years old and still, you know, get mm -hmm. in class slowly but surely. He never missed a day. And the one day he missed was because he he had to get LASIK eye surgery because mm -hmm. oh, okay. um, and he apologized to us. But ultimately, I say all of that to say the passion of my educators was the to helped with every building block towards showtime. I ended up going to Yale Drama and studying and training. And then when I graduated, I found an agent um, and my agent and I really worked hard on this plan that I had been cultivating since I was 14 <laughs> oh, <laughs> to see it come to fruition. And I had an audition um, when I came to LA uh, to visit after graduating from grad school. And that audition is what landed me the job. Tell us a little bit real quick about your role in City on the Hill. City on the Hill, I play a woman named Siobhan Keys. She's an attorney and uh, community organizer slash activist. Uh, City on the Hill takes place in 1992 um, during what was called the Boston Miracle. And um, the Boston Miracle is essentially a, a, a period of time in, um, in the mid nineties that Boston was able to reduce their crime rate and, and homicide rate, uh, crime rate by a, a large, 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 large amount. And they had almost 32 months where they didn't have a young person to die in the streets from gang violence or police violence or whatever. And it was a miracle indeed. But that was because of the work on behalf of members of the clergy, um, pastors, community leaders, you know, and, and, the, and the Boston PD. And so my character is one of those members helping to bring that miracle about. All right. And Mr. Tab, you've sent a lot of people to Howard. You've got several students there right now. What's the connection? <laughs> I'm not going to do any public service announcements <laughs> for, my HBC, for my HBCUs because some of them are going to be like, well, I've been asking him to send me some right. stuff. So, um, well, you know what? Um, Howard is a wonderful place to go. I mean, it's, it's a great school, um, but so is so is a lot of other um, HBCUs that, uh, that I leave it up to the students of where it's the best fit for them. Because um, as, as an actress, you want to get the best um training the best training and, and so many of the hbcus can give you that training but i think it's it's also with personality um that great, that great fit um of where you're going to go your location because you want to also be happy you want to be happy where you are so that you can concentrate on your craft um so uh i, I knew a lot of people at howard university uh, i knew mike mike malone um yeah. like uh, i met mike um, when I was uh, doing an intern internship or fellowship at the National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, and just like I have the celebrities in the classroom, I invited celebrities over to the National Endowment for the Arts uh, mm -hmm. to come and talk. And so we bonded, we bonded. And um, so he, him, uh, Mike Malone started uh, being one of the founders of the um, Duke Ellington School of the Arts. Uh, you know, I looked at his model as well, and I said, well, you know, Hillside High School is going to be the Duke Ellington School of the Arts in North Carolina. And I used wow. to talk to Mike Malone. Wow. And, and so he, um, so then he said, well, you know, well, send me some students. Okay. And, and I take people for that word. If you tell me to do something, I'll be like, now, okay, here they come. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they've been coming to Howard ever since. And so wow. that uh, continued. So that's, that's the connection. Okay, so with you sending your students out, now that you see that your students are being successful, like how does that make you feel? Because I know sometimes you feel like, oh man, like a proud parent. Absolutely, I, well, I feel like I'm their parent, you know, uh, uh, the parent away from home and um, because their parents in, entrust them to me. And um, so I, I'm excited about them for the smallest things that they do. You know, we get excited mm -hmm. a lot when people do these major things um, and everybody's excited about them. But I'm, I'm excited when they can call me and say, Mr. Tab, I got a call back. Mm -hmm. I'm excited <laughs> for that. <laughs> you know, so anything that they, they do um, excites me because I know that they are following their passion and they are following their dream. And, and that's what's important, that they be happy with what they're doing. 
Got you. Lauren, um, I have a question. So listening to Mr. Tab and knowing that he gets excited, um, I know that I would if I see my students going out and even those who are behind the scenes because that is just as important as in front of the camera. But like, have you ever found yourself looking back on some of the lessons that you have learned with Mr. Tab and be like, oh, I remember when he had, you know, shared this with me or shared that with me. Do you use those um, those nuggets to keep you going? Oh, absolutely. For sure. I, um, you know, as a student, one of the most beautiful things Mr. Tab demanded from us was professionalism. And um, the, it was just a no nonsense policy on being professional and professional was being prepared. Professional was um, taking your craft, your work, your process seriously. Um, mm -hmm. Being professional was respecting your peers, um, your fellow uh, castmates. So <laughs> I use those, <laughs> those principles every day. Um, and, and yeah, and, you know, there are also just quiet moments. For example, we pray before our first show. I still do that. That's part of my ritual of creating my work and opening myself up to be ready to do my best work, right? Which is mm -hmm. a lot of times being able to get out of the, your way, your own way to, in order to allow the spirit to move through you and the truth to move through you. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go how much of you how much of you do you put in your role Lauren, when you when you are preparing uh i would you know i think all of me and then i filter out the parts that don't ring true for the character itself um i i you know when i start out with the character i say okay who is this person and i'm i'm bringing my heart i'm bringing my empathy i'm bringing my sympathy I'm bringing my own experiences and therefore mm -hmm. in my politics, you know, to the to this person, and then I'm taking back what doesn't match with her, you know, with my character on City on a Hill, for example. Um, for the callback for the audition, I read it and I was very clear that um, we had a lot of politics and things um, that we shared. You know what I mean? So that was helpful, but then. I'm not from Boston. I don't know that experience. So I had to go out and spend time at a, in an Airbnb mm -hmm. in Boston to get to know the city. So, you know, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Have you ever um, been offered a role that you just was uncomfortable with? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Could yeah. you give us like an example? That, I mean, I got, I got opportunities for other roles before City on a Hill, right? Mm. Okay. I didn't just take the first thing that came to me. I took oh, what? Awesome the project that I believed in that was attached to the to people that I believed in. So, you know, the character can be great, but if I don't believe in the other creators on the project, that's not gonna be a good working situation and relationship. Um, if I don't believe in the network and their views and values, um, mm -hmm. then I can't really trust, you know, what that mm -hmm. ultimate product will look like. Um, so yeah, for example, there was a role that I, that was offered to me and I felt like the the woman was not represented in full because it was a, 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 a real character. I can't speak about it right now because the movie hasn't come out yet. Oh yeah. You know, okay, well we understand. <laughs> but you know, just the values, I, I think there were blind spots for the creators about who this right. guy was. As a black woman, as um, she happened to be a sex worker, you know, but she was, demonized yeah that. you know just so many different yeah. things i said no i can't you know take that on well you know that's kind of like a copy um our theater project we won't do any show you know and and i'll tell you right now um i'm so proud of the kids at hillside and what mr tab does because everything is for a general public you, you're not going to see anything over there that's that you would want to bring your kids to so how does it, how do you feel when you come back to Hillside and you see what Mr. Tab is doing with these kids? I mean, what, how, just tell me, how, how does that make you feel? Um, extremely grateful. Grateful to know that I'm a part of that legacy. Mm. And, and then I feel the burden of leadership to um, 
to continue to make room for them because they're on mm -hmm. the way, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. <laughs> and you know so, what, I've been, I've been with them, I think it's been 2010 since I've been shooting your shows, but all of these students, Mr. Tab, talk to me about all these students. I, the whiz just, you just tear the whiz up, no matter how many times you do it. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you know, um, since you brought up the whiz, you know, a, a lot of shows, um, I never do the same show um, with the same group of, of students. Um, so I normally do the whiz every six to seven years. Um, right. It's always it's always going to be a, a brand new cast, uh, so you don't get the chance to do the whiz twice. Mm -hmm. you get, unless you was in middle school and you came over as a munchkin from right. middle school. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think for me, uh, in selecting the shows, it's also um, challenging the students. I mean, doing shows mm -hmm. that are, that are that you would see on Broadway. That you know right. that is. It's, it's very challenging to do and also do sh shows that have a social um, meaning. I mean, it, it deals with social issues. Um, you know, the shows that, that we can do like like a Once on This Island that I did Once on This Island back in the, you know, in the 90s. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we'd already done the show. And then when it went back, went to Broadway, people was like, Once on This Island? And my, my, my students were like, um, didn't Hillside do that show? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we did. Um, don't bother me. I can't cope. Sh shows mm -hmm. that um, have these significant meanings to it um, that are sometimes revive. You know, uh, have a revival mm -hmm. that our new generation of kids are like. I think I saw that in our program that we had we had mm -hmm. done a show like that. Um, mm -hmm. So challenging them uh, so that they know that anything that's out there they can they can do. Um, but I'm very serious about doing shows that also our audience, our community would take something away that is very meaningful to them. That's yeah. it. Wow. I think it's um, I think it's amazing that you're able to create programs um, for the students before they go out. So as they go out, it's not unfamiliar. And that's what it seems like how your program is preparing them to do that um, when they go out to the community, well, go out into the world of acting. It's like, okay, well, I remember this and I remember that. Is there anything different that you would give them today as time has changed, you know, the industry has changed? How do you yourself keep up or do you feel like the basic will always remain the same? Excellent question. You know, uh, how does a, a, a director that you know that's set in his ways and knows what he wants and, and is it needs to be like this? How do you change with the times? I think it's very important that you allow the students to change, and then if you give them leadership, if you give them the empowerment of their program, they will automatically change it for you, and and you can just sit, you can just ride with them. <laughs> So when it comes to all this technology stuff, when I was mm -hmm. doing the Black History Show and we had to do all this technology in the show, I didn't know anything about all this technology. So I asked the students, "Hey, who, which one? Y'all select somebody that's going to be open. <laughs> you select somebody, and that. But then I'm going to hold them accountable. Okay, it's done right. So therefore, the programs will change. Uh, you know." as it should change with mm -hmm. leaders. Great leaders will change it for you. So and Lauren, did you, did he? the message across. I'm sorry, say it again. And yet still get the message and the vision across. So even though leadership has changed, time has changed, you're still able to get the full message of your program across. Right, because certain things don't change. Pro right. Lauren mentioned this, professionalism doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as time changes, professionalism still stays the same. You're still going to be professional as time changes. Being on time doesn't change. You still need to be on time. You know, right. uh, making sure you are prepared. That doesn't change. Right. You don't stop. Be, you don't stop being prepared because I got a new generation of kids. Mm -hmm. 
and and you know and you know as people say you know everything's got to be fast with them okay well be fast and be professional because <laughs> <Right. laughs> mr uh, uh one of the guests we had was talking about uh he went on set um steven and that some of the people weren't prepared. And he just got upset because he said mm -hmm. the little kids were knew their lines, but the grown-ups didn't know their lines. And that's not right. And that's Lauren, uh, uh, tell us about your experiences when you go on set. Uh, well, fortunately, uh, the show that I'm on is, you know, everybody comes and brings their A-game. And that, right starts with the lead, <laughs> that starts with the lead of the, you know, the show in, in, that we have in Kevin Bacon. He's a wonderful mm -hmm. leader as well. He leads, um, not boastfully, not loud, just he shows up, he's off book, he doesn't have his script, you know, he's ready to go and he leads with love with everybody he works with. Um, so we do the same. Um, but there are times when people show up and I've been on other sets where people don't know their lines. And it holds mm -hmm. up the whole production. And we've been on set for now 10 <laughs> hours. <laughs> you know, we got a we got a four, I have a 4:30 pickup time tomorrow morning. And you know, you're the and this and the crew has an early, you know, call as well. And the last thing anybody wants to do is to wait for you to figure out work that you should have done, you know, days ago. Right. So yeah. that's hard. Uh, and it's not fun. <laughs> But sometimes, sometimes it happens. The other thing is sometimes life happens, right? Mm -hmm. and, and an actor comes and they are off their game. That's not necessarily, I don't see the same thing as being unprepared, but right. just off the game. Mm -hmm. and, and that's when you have to be a team player and let them know it is okay. And you're not looking at them like, huh, I'm ready to go. But you're like, that's my castmate. That's my, my scene partner and I'm, and I'm supporting them. So if it's in lines on set between takes with them, then that's what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. So tell us the difference between film, TV, and, and theater, because we talked about this and when we were talking about as an actor, you got to bring it on, on, on stage. But, you know, when the camera's right up on you, you got, might have to pull it back. So talk to you a little bit about that transition for you. Um, yeah, I think, the, the transition uh, from theater, because I, I mean, I have an immense amount of theater training and I'm exactly. learning, I'm, you know, from, 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 from Shepherd to Hillside to, to Howard, to, to <laughs> almost 20 years, you know what I mean? It's right. a long mm -hmm. time. Um, but that I think it was the, you know, my fortune, my great fortune in being prepared for the transition um, between theater and TV, for example, because in a play, you have to learn all your lines up front. Mm -hmm. For the whole two hours, you have to know all your lines at the, you know, on the day one, whereas TV happens a section at a time, at a time, at a time. But for me, I still learn my scripts in the same way. I learn all my lines, right? And so that really helped with my transition because then I'm on TV or I'm doing a show and I, I'm not going from moment to moment to moment, but I'm able to craft my performance, if you will, over the whole arc of my character. So I can make choices in the first two episodes. Okay. And I'll have a, you know, some kind of, you know, a payoff later, right? Or if it's a film or something like that. Um, Cause some people also, because the film is shot scene by scene by day by day, um, mm -hmm. you know, I still, I approach film work in the same way. I learned the whole script. So that when I show up on day one, even if we only do two pages, I'm giving a performance that makes sense for page 59, you know? Right. So, yeah. And I think, yeah, I think the transition in terms of like the medium where it's theater is really big and you're in a 12 right. seat theater, like, you know, the, the window mm -hmm. tab theaters, uh, John H. Gaddis window tab theater. Is that what There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in a 1200 seat theater the like that. Theater, get that plug right. in there now. <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's the name of the theater now is as far yeah. as I know. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> when you're in a big theater like that and, mm -hmm. and you even going to Howard, for example, I wasn't not intimidated by that transition, right? Um, to go and perform. I also did a play at Central, I almost forgot, with, with um, Irving Truitt. Oh yeah, Mr. Truitt, my, uh, my mate. 
Yeah, um, but even that transition, for example, I was a junior in high school doing a play with college students. Mm -hmm. um, and anyway, so the transition I'm saying is when you have to play to a 1200 seat house, mm -hmm. the truth has to hit the person on the front row as much as it hits the person exactly. all the way in the back. And mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't penetrate their heart or their mind or appeal to their intellect if the truth isn't resonating from you from the inside. Right. And so I think, you know, when you transition from a, a place like that um, and then go to the screen, the truth is still palpable in you and you don't have to do much. It's actually easier to make the right. truth. Because it's just like, oh, I know how to access the truth. And now I'm just gonna allow my face for it to be seen on my face. Exactly. <laughs> versus, we, versus doing the opposite, yeah. When we were talking about that tear coming from the eye, we were talking about, uh, 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 Mr. Tab, we were talking about uh, Denzel uh, Washington and uh, Howard E. Rollins in um, uh, what's the name of the film? Soldier Story. Soldier oh, Story, yeah. When, when Howard E. Rollins at the very end was standing there at the window and that tear came down because he was upset that somebody black had killed the sergeant because everybody said it was white people that did it, but it actually was a black man. And, and, and that kind of stuff really, really it, it, it gets you. you. When you see it on screen, you say, man, that, that person can act. So, Mr. Tab, one, one thing I'd like to share, uh, Michelle, it is a, it's something beautiful to see 60 students on stage, quiet, before all of, uh, tell them, Lauren, before all of Mr. Tab's show, they are sitting on stage and they see high school students not talking, just silent, <laughs> and if they say something, <laughs> if somebody says something, Mr. Tab. <laughs> now, is this before the show, you said? Yeah, yeah. tell them why you do that, Mr. Tab. Tell them why you do that. Well, let's let's be clear that people don't think that uh, the kids are being abused here. <laughs> right, okay, yeah, no. <laughs> They're not. It's about process. You know, it's, right. it's important to process before you begin. Right. Yeah. Um, the whole thing about meditation is yeah. so important to prepare yourself for what, what you are about to do. And right. sometimes them just to sit there and just be quiet. You know, here again, I'm from the country, so I uh, I grew up with a lot of uh, myths, you know, and then, you know, it's like when it was used to be a storm or something, you know, uh, my mom used to say, okay, y'all be quiet. You mm -hmm. know? Just be quiet. <laughs> and, and so I always used to wonder why you need to be quiet. <laughs> you gotta be quiet. And I found I found myself taking all of that, what I've learned, you know, growing up into my profession, because there are times when you just need to be quiet mm -hmm. and to meditate and you need to put all your thoughts together and you just need to hear the stillness of God. Just what? Quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, and just hear the little things that are going off in the theater, like the um, the lights just popping or something, and you can hear all the little uh, intricate things mm -hmm. that you were never paid any attention to because you are now focused. Uh, and so I think it's important for them to focus because then they'll be ready. They'll be ready for prayer because their mind is clear, right? And And then after prayer, they're ready for, um, for, for the performance. And, so performance. and that comes with discipline as well, that element of discipline. Uh, they don't always want to be quiet. You know, somebody's going to say something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but that's with anything. That's like teaching, you know. Mm -hmm. so I think it's important just for the element of meditation um, and just, prepare, just being prepared. So what would you give, I know that you were at the high school, so let's just say that you have adult learners. Have you ever provided like your expertise to those who are adults to say, hey, you know, maybe I wanna give this a try or where do I start? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I, I taught um, uh, theater classes um, as an adjunct professor over at North Carolina Center in theater before as well. Um, and so I would leave my rehearsals at 6.30 and run over to teach a seven o'clock class at night um, mm -hmm. in college. Um, so, but, but what I found even with the adults is that they want to be engaged. 
you know? Uh, and so as I was teaching them, I had to bring them into that whole element of that. Uh, this is fun. This is exciting. Um, what do you bring? What can you bring to this as well? So I remember doing a class and I was teaching costuming. It was a unit on costuming. And now, granted, I don't know nothing about no costume. <laughs> I just know the basic of what I'm supposed to know. But that's a unit. It's a unit in that you have to teach on costume. So right. I brought in this mannequin. I gave it <laughs> the name. You know, I called her Roxanne because there was a song y'all did talk about Roxanne, Roxanne. So I called the mannequin Roxanne and this is Roxanne. And, and they all laughed at that. And I said, mm -hmm. so. And a lady raised her hand. She said, I know how to sew. I said, well, come on up here. She taught me. Wow. And she wow. was so excited because I gave her an opportunity to be empowered. And she wow them everything about sewing she told them about um about the materials different types of materials and i was like any questions and the kids were asking her questions and they said they told me after they said you are an amazing teacher you are so good i was like well thank you very much but I, she did the teaching mm -hmm. <laughs> right right I just orchestrated learning yes mm -hmm. orchestrate learning and so you learn yourself. So I learned so much. So, you know, and that's how you have to do it sometimes, you know, just engage them. So adults, they want to be engaged as well. Right. Well, listen, right. Lauren, in this time of COVID, um, what you what are you doing now? You told me you did some writing, but I like we like to let our audience know what you're doing. Well, believe it or not, it feels like a lot. I feel busy, yeah. very busy. Um, I, you know, at the early parts of COVID, it was a lot of meditation, a lot of just being quiet um, with myself. Um, and then that led me to go ahead and finish up some writing, ex ex writing projects I was doing. So I just finished a feature film that I look forward to, that I, I've written. I'm working on writing a TV show with a classmate of mine from Hillside, um, Marquise Gibson is his name. Mm -hmm. and um, so we meet via Zoom every day and write together. Um, and I am, auditions have started back up. So just in sure. within COVID, that's happening. I directed a short film at the top of this year before okay. COVID. So we just finished editing that and I have to send the credits over to the editor tomorrow. So it's right. busy meeting with, you know, with people for projects in 2021 and 2022 are starting up, you know, those meetings are starting up yeah. now. So, yeah, it's a lot. So with you writing and directing, um, would you say this will be your, like a hidden talent? Did you ever see yourself like during your journey? Uh, Cause I know maybe the first thought process and I'm only guessing that, Hey, I want to be an actress, but as you, you know, grow and move forward, did you find any hidden talents? And if, if you have, do you think it's the writing and the directing? Say, hey, I want to give this a try. Yeah, I mean, in the process, it, it definitely mm -hmm. started as, as a young person, as a middle school and high school, I just want, I want to be an actor. My passion is acting. Um, right. But even at Hillside, I assistant directed. I was, I was the, the president of the drama club for my junior and senior year. So I was responsible for helping with, producing um, the one voice projects that we were doing um, okay. around the city, uh, writing, you know, within those projects and writing my own work at Hillside. So it was at, once I got to Howard and I became the Howard Players president and, and mm -hmm. producer for the Howard Players. And I was, we were producing projects. I was producing projects that I wasn't also acting in because that's what I did at, at Hillside. I acted in, was a part of, um, assistant directing, but I found myself enjoying the process of producing just as much. And I think the aha moment was like, oh, I've been doing this all along. I've been acting, I've been writing, I've been mm -hmm. directing all along. And then I said, oh, my passion isn't acting, my passion is storytelling. You know, it's it's just mm -hmm. being a storyteller. And I get to be a storyteller from as a producer, I get to be a storyteller as a director, and I'm involved in making sure that the most strong, palpable, truthful, impactful story comes to life. So yeah, that's how that came about for sure. Awesome. 
Mr. Tab, you have brought so many stars back to Durham. Talk, talk about your connection with the, uh, uh, with the movie industry and the TV industry and the National Black Theater Festival in New York. Go ahead, brother. Well, you know, it's, it's so important that um, I think that my students are connected at a, at, a young, at a young point in their career to other people who have already paved the way, who's doing it, who can give them very valuable information, uh, give them mentorship, um, and start off very young. So I, I thought it was very important that I connect uh, my students with people that are already in the industry. Networking is something that people talk about in any profession. And why not, you know, do your networking young, early, uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to waiting till they, they get out there and then they're trying to meet people. Well, you know, my students have already met a lot of people in the industry. And, um, and I think that's important early on. The other thing to that, uh, and Lauren kind of hit on it in, in networking is, um, they can network amongst themselves as well. Like she's working with Marquise. Uh, it's in, mm -hmm. that's part of it. That's all a part of um, networking. With the celebrities, um, you need spokespeople. You need people to watch right. your product. Mm -hmm. and, and those, the celebrities that are out there, you know, they tell other people about our product. Um, and people want to research us too. You know, they're going to look. You know, now with technology, you you mentioned, well, oh, Hillside has a wonderful, wonderful theater program. Well, what mm -hmm. are they going to go Google it? And they go right. and, and when they go <laughs> Google it, then then Danny Glover pops up in right. and and uh, Andre the okay? Andre the Shields is going to pop up with him being Hillside, and it gives value. Now all of a sudden, those people who didn't think it had value, now the program has value to them because. Oh, all of these people know about Andre Andre Leon Talley, who's a graduate of Hillside. Right. You know, come there and they do all these stories and articles on them being at Hillside. It opens it opens doors for my students early on that they don't have to wait until after they've already done a, uh, an MFA program and then they're trying to go to different places to meet people. Well, they already have met these people, and now right. also when these celebrities come to Hillside. The, the, you, the people who've already graduated are going to run back into these same people. And then that's a conversation piece. Now Lauren Bates can say, oh, you were at Hillside. You were at right. my school. Oh, you went to Hillside too? You know, so it's, um, in this industry, people are looking for the in conversational piece. And I think having the celebrities here to, to motivate kids and um, will also open doors for them. And um, I think that's an important part of growth and learning and collaboration. Like Starletta Du Bois just love your program. She just, oh, she tells everybody. <laughs> As, absolutely, absolutely. Uh -huh. Oba, Bamba Tunde and- Yeah, you know, Bamba Tunde. I don't wanna get, start naming people, then you leave out all the- Yeah, people. right. <laughs> you know, Margaret Shook Avery, can, you know, being right. there and- um, uh, um, gosh, um, gosh, from, um, see, now you're making me try to think of all the people that have, that have been there. Right, um, I know. <laughs> I did a film um, with um, Huggy Bear. Um, oh, yeah, Antonio Fargus. Antonio I Fargus, right? Antonio, you know, I still talk to Antonio. You know, he invites me out to Las Vegas, and I went out to Las Vegas to see one of his his shows. Okay. You know. But from the you know just us connecting and and I just, Andre, Andre De Shields will send us a note you know right get on us and you know and with him winning the Tony now my kids were like hey right. you, know, I, you know Andre De Shields he came to Hills you know right. he was walking down the street in Durham with us you know <laughs> uh, right <laughs> so I, I think it's it's important but it's a lot of work it's a lot of hard work to coordinating it all and I think people have to understand that um, the bigger you want your program, the more work you're going to have to put in it. Right. And I think sometimes people want results, but they don't want to put in the time and effort mm -hmm. to get the results. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm um, not saying that we do all of this, you know, but I'm saying that there is a commitment that you have to make 
And I, I made that commitment a long time ago that if I'm going to do it, let's do it all the way. Right. And what did, wasn't it special when Lauren came with all the celebrities and here's Lauren up there with all of them? I mean, I was just tickled. Like, I knew it when she was there. <laughs> Exactly. Well, it's kind of like when you go to the National Black Theater Festival, right? You can see people walking around at the Black Theater Festival, and they're handing out their stuff, and mm -hmm. you know, trying to meet producers and directors and whatever. And you can go back the next year, and and now they're the celebrity, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's like that with when the students come back to Hillside. You know, they mm -hmm. can leave on the stage at Hillside. I already see them as my celebrities. They're yeah. already is when they're on the stage. Other people may not know that, but I know that. They're already celebrities. But then when they come back, they're just coming home, you know, just to another warm welcome. But they've been celebrities all the time. Oh, yeah, that's, that's nice. Know. That is. So, Michelle, you got any final thoughts to ask? Yes. So, as we ask most of our, as we ask our guests who comes onto the show, can you give us two advice for those who are watching, whether they're our seniors or our young ones, how they can become an actor and what should they do to prepare for that step? Well, I'll give one and then okay. we'll tag team Mr. Tab. I would highly encourage young people, um, older, young and old, anybody who wants to be a creator who is an artist and wants to continue to be a professional artist and continue to grow their work. Um, it's so important. I mean, Mr. Tab kind of just spoke to it, but it's so important that you invest in yourself and that you write your own things and that you create your own product, if you will, because I think the, the biggest misconception about this industry is that it's an industry that has to point you out and pick you out and then just bring you into it and then things happen. But it's really like, <laughs> it's um, the, I, I feel like the film industry, the TV industry is so much like a, um, almost like a farmer's market. It's like everybody yeah. has their own little product, their own little booth. And then people go through and like, hmm, I wanna shop over here, shop over here. And mm -hmm. you really are the CEO of your own business. Yeah. Whether you're in the industry or outside of the industry. So the sooner you get that, the better. Because again, I'm working on a TV show with my friend that I'll be shopping to networks, you know. And mm -hmm. and once you have one job, it doesn't mean that you're going to have another job. So it makes sense that you are preparing for your next job at every turn. Um, and, and whether you are a student in Durham, North Carolina right now or, you know, a graduate of a major program in LA, um, there's always going to be somebody looking to buy new content mm -hmm. and fresh content and true content. And you can create that from wherever you are. You can be in Bangladesh, you know, create what? something that is true and real and, and, and people are moved by it. There's a market for it. And it, you don't have to have a million followers on Instagram and a big agent to make that happen, but you have a good product and then you get it out there and then you connect with people and and that can help, you know, open those doors. But yeah. Awesome. You see what you have to go second because Lauren, everything that I was gonna say, Lauren just said, I know Mr. Tab's gonna say this, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good teaching though. Right. I, exactly. I knew exactly. I knew exactly. I, exactly. I, you know, I, knew exactly right. I knew exactly what she was gonna say. I said, she's going to say this right here. And she said, <laughs> one of the other things, and I have so many, so you say it too. So that's an easy thing uh, because you have, you have to teach so much. But one, one, one thing that's so important is I tell the students, don't let anybody else validate your success. Right. That's important. And uh, so, and I think that a lot of people, especially artists are finding that out now because with this COVID going on, so right. many were, were dependent you know, we're dependent on other people doing stuff for them. Right. Now they're at a standstill going, okay, well, what is my, what am I worth? What is my value worth now? What do I do? Because I'm at a standstill and you are finding people being more creative now. They're trying to figure out, well, I'm talented. 
I'm gifted. Right. I can do well. I'll start this now. I'll do that. And that's mm-hmm. what I've been doing all the time. Don't wait for anybody else to validate your success. You go for it and you do your own writing, you do your own producing, you do your, your directing, mm-hmm. and, and bring people along with you. Bring people along with you. Don't think that you have to do it all by yourself, that it has to be all you. Um, people who have supported you, go back and pull them back up. That's right. Mm-hmm. It's very important. So that's that's my first one. Don't let anybody else validate your success. Go, Lauren. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> funny, Mr. Tab, I was going to say that. I was going to say right. a word. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think, um, yeah, I think that's that's highly important. And I think I just want to add on, like, yeah, creating your own definition of what success is for you has been so important mm-hmm. to, to speak to what Mr. Tab is saying. Um, it's been really important to define what success is for me. And for me, success is work doing work that I believe in with people that I believe in. Yes. And I can do that. I can do that in L.A. and Hollywood. I can do that in Durham, North Carolina on Fayetteville Street. You know what I mean? Like it's and I will be successful and I will be happy wherever I am. So, mm-hmm. but if I am in LA doing work that I don't believe in with people I don't believe in, I won't mm-hmm. be successful. And if I'm not doing and if I'm not doing that back at home, I'm also not successful. So that's to Mr. Tab's point, defining your own success. Um, I just strongly encourage people to create a five-year plan. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter where you are. I think, you know, I, my senior book ironically created a five-year plan for me, right? I had to fill out Mm -hmm. what you want to do then. What do you want to do next? And one day I look at the senior book and I'm like, oh, I said in high school that I was going to be the Howard play involved with the Howard players. Wait, what? I said, I said that, um, you know, spelling things out, you know, cast a spell Mm -hmm. on the universe sometimes. And that's important to know. So um, once I realized that I very intentionally created a five-year plan in high school that, I saw what, what I was going to go do beyond, I mean, I'm sorry, intentionally created a five-year plan in college. And then once I got to college, I very intentionally created a five-year plan for um, in grad school. And I look back and I'm like, oh, I did that thing. Oh, I did that. Or oh, I wasn't specific enough about that, you know? Mm-hmm. And being sp- specific and holding yourself to um, deadlines for your product um, is important just because it's so easy to get lost. It's so easy to look up and three years later, you're like, what have I done? Why? With my, craft, with my goals and the things that I, I believe in and I want for myself. But if you have something to hold your own self accountable, it's so, it's so helpful. And then when things take off in a great direction, but it's not in court, according to your five-year plan, you can look at your plan and say, oh, well, I got all of these resources. Now let me, let me look at my plan and see what else I wanted to do for myself or I don't have anything going on. Let me look at my plan and, and create my own schedule for myself. So having a five-year plan. Yeah, I'm you know what? I tell my students all the time because I, when I was out in Los Angeles and before I got into TV, I worked in a, a plant mm-hmm. and I hated the job. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what do I want to really be in? I want to be in radio and TV. Mm-hmm. So I went to school, I dropped that job, got a GI Bill, went to school uh, and, and, and got a degree in radio, TV, film, was in radio for 20 years, was in TV for 20 years, love my job. And mm-hmm. that's what students need to understand that you are going to school so that you can get into a career that you love doing. Absolutely. That you, by the way, get paid, right? Yeah, absolutely. And also, and so you don't also get lost in thinking everything has to be so instant. Sometimes, right. It is like part of your five-year plan is working at a plant for a year, saving right. up a whole lot of money, and then going to go do that other thing. And you're not deterring from your plan, right? You're not deterring right. from your path mm-hmm. just because you're exactly. not doing something, you know, within your gift. So. Within yeah. it. Michelle, final words. My number two. Oh, oh, is oh, you don't want my number two? <laughs> yeah, yes, go ahead. I want your number two. Ahead. You don't want it's my like number two. Five, Mr. Tab, that's why. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's okay, you're Go good. You, you know my number two? I think it's so it's important that um, we take care of ourselves physically and mentally. Absolutely. Right. So important. Um, you know, we have to understand that this can be a stressful industry mm-hmm. and we don't need to take on unnecessary stresses. And right. sometimes we, if we take care of ourselves mentally and physically, um, 
you know, it's, it's, a, it's a much easier process to go through all of this uh, when you do that, when you make right. it sure that you're eating right, when you make sure that, um, that you are mm -hmm. mentally, that you, that you are thinking about your, your body, both physically and mentally. Um, and a lot of times, especially with the young actors and actresses and behind the scenes person that I teach, thing becomes a big thing for them. And what I have to tell them sometimes, they help take a step back. That's not that important. Right. Let's, let's kind of okay. walk through that. Let's walk through that. Now, is that really that, was that really something to just to send you off the edge? And now you, you mad the rest of the day because of that? <laughs> so I, I think it's important that I have to keep teaching them that. And so that as they go through this process, that they are better prepared uh, mentally and physically. Very important. All right. Well, next week we're taking a week off, just like you said. You got to be uh, take. You know, it's it's the Fourth uh, of July weekend, and so we're going to replay this for folks that didn't get to see it. And then on July twelfth, we have scheduled the cast of the Dance on Widow's Road, and we have the whole cast here, and we're going to talk about that play, uh, which was Agape Theater Projects May two thousand and nineteen. Uh, a play and uh, and we'll get a chance to meet the director and the entire cast. So uh, it's been nice talking to both of you. And April says she will uh, join us on another time when we, we bring y'all back, but um, it's been great. Yes. So great. Michelle. I just wanna say thank you both. Thank you to the both of you for taking the time out. Um, Lauren, you are such a busy woman and hats yeah. off to you. We wish you all the best in everything that you do. Um, Mr. Mm -hmm. Tab, Mr. The Legend, one day the I'm going to confirm <laughs> and physically meet you, Mr. Tab. But I definitely want to say um, continue to um, sow into your community and so into your students. Um, we don't see it too often in the forefront. Um, but again, thank you so much for the both of you for taking the time out to be with us on Theater Talk um, Agape. Oh, wow. All right. That's April and I. Oh, yes. good. OK, April. Oh, okay. wow. You know what that, do that was? Was that doing Dream Girls? Yeah, OK. That was doing when I did Dream Girls, and I brought them yeah, That was my first play, and then she had come back 10 years later from when she did it. Originally. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's See? some good stuff right there. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, Mr. Tab. Thank you, Lauren. And thank you, Michelle. And we will see you guys later and next time on Theater Talk Live. Take care. Right, thank you. Love you, Lauren. Love you too. Bye. Right. Love so you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you All right, bye. Thank you.